So I'm back for a break. Just finished uh, some stuff in my term, so I have a little bit of free time to kind of poke at maybe doing a quick video. Just had a question uh, with regards to scale. I thought I would address it with a quick video. So um, let's start off with the, the first concept that is important. It's something that I've mentioned before in some of the other videos, and that scale is arbitrary, right? Uh, it depends on the features that you see that determine how we feel the scale is of an object. Um, we can completely destroy the scale uh, or the perception of scale in an object by simply adding another feature to it. Um, you can throw in you know, large blades of grass onto something that seems like a massive m mountain structure and suddenly it just seems like it's a hill. So um, context is the biggest part of establishing scale for an object. So if we look at these mounds of dirt, right, they're not terribly big and it's other things that we see around them that tell us what scale they are. But if we really look at them obje objectively, we might see, you know, indications of erosion, um, uh, other little features that we might see in a mountain scale. So um, this is not a great looking picture, but it's got some interesting features here. Here we've got, you know, uh, erosion, things that we might see in the default erosion setting for uh, Gaia, and yet you can see trees are just as tall as this mountain. So this is not a mountain, it's just a mound of dirt. This is well, we can see the you know, street signs, and yet we see all these deep fissures of um, just rain erosion digging into to the surface. And really what happens is the exact same thing, just on a much larger scale, to uh, a mountain, and it's just over you know, a really long period of time, those grooves got deeper and wider. Each construction site would establish as a scale for us a few things. We've got the tire treads, we've got the trucks itself. And then um, the size of these sort of like chunks and the frequency of them does have an impact on uh, what we feel. The separation of these big chunks. This is something that we wouldn't see in a very large scale terrain. So if we added this into a terrain that even though it had some smaller features, we would nurture the idea that it was a much smaller uh, surface than you know what we might otherwise perceive. So again, uh, same kind of things here. And honestly, this is the way that people work with regards to doing miniatures on set. They'll take something that isn't a big scale and then they'll, you know, dress it up, they'll put little things, you know, little tiny miniature scaffolding or other features in there to nurture the idea that when we look at it, we feel like it's much more massive than it is. So um, focus on those things. Those are the things that are most important in terms of establishing what scale is. So inside of Gaia, establishing scale, there's some other features. Uh, we can go ahead and we can play with, you know, our, our primitives and establishing, you know, a sense of scale can be a matter of the detail that we have in the features and how, you know, tall or, or not that they are, how big they are. Right, so um, I've done other videos here where the, the stuff that I've done has reflected sort of like a, the idea of a cliff, a portion of a cliff versus an entire you know mountain range using the same Voronoi. So just by adjusting some of these features, we can make something appear big or small. Again, by paying attention to the details. What do the details look like? What do they tell us? So outside of that, we have erosion. And so I have the same basic settings for erosion. And the only thing I'm changing here is the scale. So I turned off real scale and I started playing with feature scale, terrain scale, and, and verticality. Or well, actually feature scale is when you have it such real scale. So terrain uh, scale and verticality. So just by adjusting that feature, by taking feature scale and adjusting that, or sorry, um, uh, train scale and verticality. If we look at, I think, 
that's just default. And this is also default with a slight other change. Um, you see the train scale here. And train scale, it's only been brought down a tiny bit. This is just to adjust for it. But adjusting the verticality has made this now look like a much more massive sort of um, island, right, in terms of the erosion. Um, here we've got a you know, large mountain range, which is not necessarily as big as, you know, an entire island. And we can continue to adjust that based on, you know, again, feature scale and, and play with things like taking the train scale all the way up. It's going to make these grooves deeper. It's going to, you know, enhance the feeling of these, these indentations. This is, you know, obviously a, a, a large mountain, but larger than say this one. And then adjusting the verticality in the other direction changes how these, these features look. So again, we look for the features that we want. Okay, this is a, you know an island. It has these particular details. Let's go ahead and play with some of these settings. So other things that we can do with this is you know, down cutting to make these appear deeper, but again, verticality. So taking train scale up will, will deepen erosion and taking verticality down will deepen erosion. So if you want uh, deep inset features, those are the things that you can change. Um, you can also increase things like uh, inhibition and drop down cutting in order to just smooth out a terrain to uh, prevent it from um, getting much visible erosion to begin with. Some of the changes there. And this one here, it's just rebuilding. Um, I've got lots of little details in here, which is nice. Right, and I can take those and I can actually just go ahead and take aperture and make them into little mounds. And this is something that I do to to do stuff like rolling hills. I'll run an erosion on a, a big sequence of hills, and then do an aperture on them, and that will kind of squeeze uh, those little sections in there. We can also go ahead and adjust this and add some vertical noise, vertical distort. And this gives us sort of like a dirt texture, which again, starts to impact its scale. I can start working with uh, a Voronoi um, technique that I've, I've put into another video for adding rocks to mounds. And I'm just doing two different scales of these rocks. And I'm adding them one at a time. Now we have a whole bunch of rocks scattered on this. And so that's obviously changed the scale of this. In terms of things like snowfall, it also has these sort of features. So right here, I'm using um, two different scales to try and um, get a, a specific look. Let's just grab a snowfall here by default. And we'll put on there. And that has certain features to it that tell me what the scale of this is, even though I've got a bunch of these little rocks and mounds. This here looks like large scale. This here looks like small scale. I can try and adjust that, adjust from real scale, and then try tweaking this. And by adjusting this, um, it changes where that goes. You can play with verticality. And now this seems much more massive, even though I haven't really changed anything about the train, I've just adjusted how the snow works. Um, one of the aspects with snow that you have to recognize is it also um, removes details. So if I take the train scale to quite small, what this ends up doing is also create some nice smooth coverage. It's basically like it thickens out the snow and that also impacts the, the presence of scale. So there's, there's plenty that you can get without changing any other settings that you can just go ahead and do this. So in this particular case, what I did is I used two different sort of scale settings.
that I liked, just the visuals of, based on, say, looking at a quick reference. And then I created a uh, height in order to separate one version from the other version. So I just have the invert of that, and that blends from version one, which is, uh, I have a snow mask on, and that's plugged into the snow mask. And then I have this version, which has similar uh, features to what was there, the small kind of breakup, and they're, they're here as well. So it just creates like a visual consistency. And then I've combined their height information, so the smoothing that the, the snow is done in that particular case. And then I've also combined uh, their masks. Again, using the same stuff. I'm using the, uh, the mix and match here. So I've got my invert and the original height to work with the combines. And then the height just to clean that up. So you can establish scale pretty straightforwardly just by you know paying attention to the features. What do I see in there? What should I see in there? And how how should that look? And then it's just a matter of kind of combining some of the other techniques that I've shown in various videos just to 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 get yourself there. Uh, moving forward uh, over the next little while. There's been some changes to the interface since my, my last sequence of videos. Um, there's a few new tools that are available. I'll see if I can find the time to put together a few additional videos covering some of those features and tools. And uh, that's it. So hopefully, hopefully you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.